wire wrapping world, everybody's always like, pendant stones. They're so amazing. I need the most beautiful pendant stones. Big, flat, round, beautiful stones. I need them to make a beautiful necklace. You can't expect me to make a beautiful necklace without a big, semi-precious, beautiful stone. And that's not true at all. Like, you just gotta believe in yourself. You have no idea what you can do with things that might look very ordinary and simple once you start practicing just a little bit of skill, not even that much. Let me show you. Just a stack of beads can make a beautiful necklace. And it doesn't even matter if the beads are all the same size or shape. In fact, if they're different sizes and shapes, it's even better. Look at this cool glass bead. I got somebody gifted it to me. It's pretty cool, right? You don't need a bead this interesting, but I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna take these 10 millimeter amethyst. It's dark amethyst, right? Let's put them right there. Yeah. And I'm gonna take these eight millimeter little kind of flattened round, I guess they're kind of like a rondelle, faceted glass beads, crystals. And just put them right there like that. And then let's just take this, just like this. You can use 18 or 20. 20 is easier if you're a beginner, but I'm gonna use 18. And I don't know, let's take, ah, ha, ha, I don't know, three and a half feet, a little more than a meter, right? Something like that. And let's string it through. And treat this little structure here like it was a whole pendant stone. So you just take your stack of beads and you put your wire through it and wrap it as if it was an entire pendant stone. Because an entire pendant stone might look really pretty in a lot of the photos you've seen online or a lot of the pictures you've seen or pieces you've seen from people who are really skilled. But because you're breaking it up into little beads that are all different, your piece is gonna look even more unusual and interesting, I say. So let's do this. String these on. Voila, now what I always like to do is take my stone to the middle of the wire. So we're gonna pretend this is our stone. And we're gonna take it to the very middle of the wire. To do that, we'll take the two wire ends and bring the tips together like that and then we can feel, pull towards the middle and feel what the middle is. Now that's basically the middle, it doesn't have to be exact, but that gives us almost an equal amount of wire on each side to work with. So now, next thing we wanna do is crimp very tightly. You wanna crimp it. This is where the beads will try to roll all over, don't let them. You wanna crimp a very tight right angle and then a very tight right angle going the opposite way like that. And now this part is gonna be my top, so I'm gonna make a nice, little bail loop at the top. I'm just doing this with my fingers. I haven't even picked up my tools yet. Just like that. And get it about the size I want. Give it a half twist like that. Locks it in. And now I'm going to come down. And you can do all kinds of fun stuff like this, but I'm actually going to do it a little differently because these beads are kind of fun and they're giving me ideas. So I'm going to wrap around through like this. And come around like this. And I think I might do the same thing right here. I think I'm gonna make a little loop at the bottom here because I might be able to use that later for something to anchor something onto. It's always good to have a loop at the top and the bottom. You're gonna make a freeform structure. That's what I always find. Because that loop will come in handy later if you wanna hang something, if you wanna anchor something around it, <clears throat> if you wanna anchor something through it. Now I'm gonna pick up my first tool, round nose pliers, and I'm just gonna roll this a little tighter. I want this loop to be a little smaller than the one at the top, but not much. And then I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna turn it a half turn like this, really lock that loop in there like that, All right? And now I have this one coming up like this, and I have this one coming down like this, and I'm gonna give that a little loop-de-loop. -loop. And then I'm gonna turn them into a swirl right down, right around this area. And to turn them into a swirl, you simply cross them, and I want to cross them right in front of that amethyst, basically. I'm going to cross, and I'm moving all around because this wire is reaching out and grabbing stuff, so I have to kind of 
duck and dodge to get it. But if you're not trying to hide your wire wrapping directly under a camera, and if you cleared off your table a little better than me, then you won't have as much problem. So I'm pressing tight here and now I'm wrapping these around each other and see once they link each other and they start wrapping around in the same direction, they're gonna form a swirl. So we're gonna come move one side and then you move the other side, pressing the whole thing flat at the same time. See how it's starting to make a swirl? And keep going with it. The wire's just grabbing everything and scratching, that's okay. And that is a good enough swirl for me. So I'm gonna come out of that now. I'm gonna come back around with these. And now I'm gonna give them, I'm just gonna have them dance back up to the top and then grab onto that loop. So they're just gonna, they're gonna separate. They're like ice skaters. They did a swirl together. Now they're both coming around the ice, but they're gonna come in a wider arc. They're gonna separate and then maybe they'll come back together. Foreshadowing, secret, they will come back together. All right, so I have this nice arc coming and now I'm gonna grab it right here and I'm gonna have the arc come back the other way like that and see how they're coming back together. Seeing how that makes a really pretty swirl, a really pretty like curve like that. And I want that to stay in the very front. All right, and very simple. This is my top loop. I'm just gonna come across the top loop and I'm not going to make it too busy. I'm just gonna end it right here. I'm gonna have it Press these tight and get them right in there and start scarfing this loop right here. Scarfing it like it's a face and I'm wrapping a scarf around it and we're just coming up like that and we're stacking. I'm holding everything tight while I do this so nothing goes out of place. Stacking and then I look. I look at my whole piece. Do I want to change anything? Do I want anything different? I'm going to straighten it out a little bit. No, I'm pretty happy with it. I'm pretty happy with this. I'm going to bend that around a little bit more so it doesn't stick out as much, so it wraps around the area like that. But no, I'm pretty happy with this. See how simple that was? Now you can make one. It's just a stack of beads. And it could be any beads. You could have flat beads, square beads, you could intermingle different shapes and sizes. It'd be really fun. But generally, I like to have put the biggest bead in the middle and then have them kind of taper down to smaller beads. You don't even need to follow that, whatever works for you. But anyway, I'm going to tuck, I'm gonna cut these right here. So for the first time in a while, I didn't give myself a, too little of wire. I actually have plenty. I cut these halfway across the loop there. And this is the first time I'm picking up my needle nose pliers. I'm going to pinch them towards the middle of the little bowl that I made with the scarf. See that little bowl? Pinch them towards that and then turn and pinch them down deep into that bowl. And then I'm just gonna straighten everything out a little bit. And I'm gonna wrap these a little bit more so they don't, this is kind of fun, the beads kind of spin in there. But that's basically it. Um, you can turn this a quarter turn and then put your looper chain through it. I'm actually gonna add three jump rings at the top instead of turning it a quarter turn. Thank you.